Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan Concrete Association winter webinar series uh, on Tuesday mornings throughout March and uh, into April. Uh, this is, I believe, the third one in our series um, at, that we scheduled uh, as a result of the cancellation of the Thursday portion of our conference in Kalamazoo back in February. So. Uh, from an ice storm, which uh, is the promo code to get into these webinars free of charge, as well as um, I think we've got some photographic evidence of what happened uh, in Kalamazoo in today's presentation. So, uh, but our presenter today is Marvin Potts with Consumers Concrete Corporation. We're happy to have him here um, to talk about uh, building uh, a CDL fleet, um, training your drivers or training a fleet of drivers uh, to be able to drive for your company. Uh, so that they can uh, maintain their CDL status um, and uh, how to do that in-house as opposed to, uh, you know, having people just show up at your door magically having uh, a commercial driver's license. So uh, Marvin has been with Consumers Concrete for almost 24 years uh, and has worked his way up, served in various roles in the company, uh, currently serving as operations manager for uh, this Ready Mix Concrete producer member of ours, one of the founding members of the Michigan Concrete Association, actually, Consumers Concrete. Happy to have them uh, continue their membership. But he um, is going to talk to us about um, that topic of building a CDL fleet of drivers uh, and training your employees to get their CDLs. Marvin has, uh, like I said, a lot of experience in the concrete industry over the last 24 years working with consumers uh, and also has accounting and business degrees as well as an MBA. Uh, and so he brings a wealth of knowledge and experience uh, and we're happy to have him give this uh, discussion and presentation for us today. So Marvin, thank you and take it away. If you wanna uh, stop your video and just show the PowerPoint, that's fine too, it's up to you. All right, thanks for having me guys. Uh... I'm going to share my screen here. So this was uh, obviously supposed to be uh, uh, done a little, little earlier in the year, um, but uh, some stuff happened. Uh, we ended up with that uh, nice ice storm. So we're going to, you know, postpone that a little bit and let's do it now. Um, now this is going to be, you know, uh, fairly informal. We don't, if you guys have questions and Steve, I assume they can just raise their hand on the deal. Yep. Uh, I'll keep an eye on, on the, the, the bar at the bottom when you raise okay. your hand. Um, it, it's probably best to type the question in the Q and a portal. Uh, if you have any technology issues, use the chat window. Uh, but if we if I see the, the questions come up, I'll I'll uh, pause you, Marvin, and we can address it. May, hopefully, yep. when the information is still fresh. Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's go here. All right, so uh, building an in-house CDL training program, like overview, just like Steve was saying, um, just really trying to focus on how we can help our industry. Uh, you know. Uh, general in general in Michigan and one of the you know biggest uh, hurdles that we have is is getting people who are qualified to drive and um, so I feel like we've had a successful program and it has uh, only gotten better uh, as of late so why uh, does some would someone want to do this and uh, according to NRMCA's uh, 2022 fleet benchmarking survey our region, which is the Great Lakes slash Midwest region, had the median driver age of 47. Um, it also had the median, showed that the median tenure had decreased from 11 years in, in 2017 to seven years in 2021. So, uh, which means we just had quite a few retirees who, who or people who left the industry who had a lot of years of service, um, just a lot more turnover has been happening. But for 2021, it showed that the producers in our area had a 13% vacancy rate. So there was a significant amount of trucks that were available and we could have hauled more yardage that would have helped out our industry. So in 2022, Consumers Concrete trained 17 uh, CDL drivers. So 17 mixer drivers. And then we also trained a mechanic just so that he had the ability to 
you know, test the fleet. Uh, of those, uh, of those 14 are still employed. Um, that rate rate for us for actually keeping people on board is significantly better than those who uh, just come in straight out the door or straight in the door with a CDL. Uh, most of the people who we have who we trained, you know, almost all are employee referrals. Um, we have quite a few uh, uh, of our CDL trainees now who were kids or, or, or grandkids or friends of others who have worked here. Uh, one of the things that this has helped us to do is drastically reduce our median age over the last few years. Um, the EL, the entry level entry level driver training you know, final rule that was you know published back in 2016, uh, it kept getting kicked down the road. A lot of us did not think this was actually going to actually go into uh, uh, actually be enforced uh, in February, but that compliance date was February of last year, so it's just been over a year. And prior to that rule, many producers, including ourselves, um, would still do us uh, uh, in-house training and just send the drivers out for testing, but didn't necessarily have to track all that training and, and become um, actual training providers. So who can provide the, the ELD training now after February 17th? And those are just people who have registered, you know, uh, through the TPR. Now the FMCSA makes it actually fairly easy for you to sign up and set it all up. Um, if you're interested, but we started, we seen this was coming and we started it, as it shows there in 2021, you know, in December, 2021 is when we got approved. We started the approval process in like October, it just took us a little while to get through it. Um, so what's needed for you to do that? You must first register, you know, with the F FMCSA. Uh, you have to teach theory instruction. You have to teach uh, basic vehicles training, which, you know, we call range and you have to teach behind the wheel training. So you have three different three different levels of instruction. And the first step that we do at least um, is when someone comes to us and is a candidate before we were would willing to look at them and hire them, they, they actually gotta go get their CDL or go get their permit for their CDL. Um, we only do class Bs internally for training, just that's, you know, 90% of our drivers are class B drivers, and that's what we're we're skilled at. Um, so when we we were doing this during COVID, it was kind of hard to get in the Secretary of State. So we we actually would uh, ourselves set up appointments for people. And uh, typically we'll set them up for a couple of appointments because sometimes they don't pass it on their first test or not on their first try. Um, but uh, so we have them come ready, you know, for with the permit and then it takes at least two weeks after you have your permit before you can uh, test anyway. So it's uh, good for them to have it before they even come to orientation for us. <clears throat> so the theory instruct instruction has to be provided by uh, an actual someone who at least has whatever level of uh, CDL that they're going through and have had, had to have it for, I believe it's at least two or two years. Um, now the Teaching can can be in a form of lectures, demonstrations. You know, you can have PowerPoints, um, computer-based, or, or online training. Um, now, the theory instruction they have thirty things that you have to hit on. In in that, so this was set up. FMCSA sets it up uh, and tells you what curriculum you have to teach on. It doesn't tell you exactly what to teach, just the curriculum. So for us, we have 39 modules to hit the 30, um, 30 items in theory. Now, that's because we have a few of them who need more than one module to, uh, to get what we figured is the adequate training. Um, so when going through training, uh, your candidates must, they take a test at the, at the end of each training, and they have to at least get an 80%. Uh, to pass, otherwise they have to redo it. Um, now you have to maintain those records um, as well. And one of the things that we do is partner with uh, JJ Keller. So there's a few other uh, consulting companies, but we partner with JJ Keller for those modules. You know, we we went in through and figured out which ones were were the best. They have a lot more than 39 available to you. I think there's like 63, um, but 
uh, if you're only doing class B, you don't need you don't need all of those. Um, so after they've passed their theory, and you know they already have their permit, they're past their theory, then we send them a a, a video <laughs> that actually goes over uh, the pre trip inspection. Um, the pre trip inspection is where almost all failures happen. I think I don't, that, that's the only place we've ever had anyone fail. Um, and uh, it's either pre-trip or, or your actual air uh, test. So we also give them a, uh, a sheet that goes with it and they can watch that video as many times as possible, but then we partner them uh, with our trainer as well. Got, that's actually our head trainer right there was. Uh, Johnny just got a promotion, so he's going to be training somebody else to be his head trainer uh, for 2023. Um, so part of part of the uh, uh, range is this: the things that they're actually going to be testing on uh, for the for the uh, actual test is straight line backing, offset backing. There's parallel parking, um, and then alley docking. Uh, most of these, the 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 it's important to let the uh, candidates know that they they have opportunities to actually get out and look at and look at their truck before um, honking the horn and state it that they're complete. So the third type is behind the wheel training, and uh, behind the wheel training is the actual you know on the road. Um, there's several uh, things that they highlight that FMCSA says that you need to go over. It doesn't go over everything it just um we're going to have more things uh than they have and this really the um the time here is is variable on how much time somebody needs on public road um for us our our intent is really just to get them through the cdl test because they're going to have to do more training uh in a mixer uh, once they once they do that, all the tests for us are done in a in a dump truck. So it's in a tandem axle dump truck. It's the same. It's the same truck that is in the video, uh, unless we have somebody that needs to get um, that needs to get their manual. Um, uh, most of our candidates we we just do automatics because the mixers are automatics, but our block trucks are manual. So if we have someone who needs to get a manual, then we'll do it in one of our block trucks. Um, so one of the things about the training, not just behind the wheel training, but all of them, they do not allow test out. So if someone had their CDL previously, you know, years ago, and then re-registered to, to come and get it, they got to go through the whole process, right? And the instructors has, have to cover every topic that at least is li uh, listed. They got to determine and document that each training has demonstrated proficiency in all elements of the behind the wheel uh, curriculum. And once they have done that, then you log back into the website, to the FMCSA website, and you submit uh, the three different submissions that they have. And then you have to do that by midnight of the second business day. So as soon as they pass your, as soon as they pass your um, theory curriculum, you log in and, and put it in there, ask for the uh, percentage that they pass with. So it's a cumulative percentage, then, uh, as soon as they pass, if you do your behind the wheel and your range training separately, you still need to log them each time. So the skills testing. So we have partnered with a couple different skills testers. Uh, recently, we partnered with with one right in Kalamazoo that's very sim close to us. And then we partnered with one in uh, Byron Center that's close to one of our plants. Um, but they are not all the same. The different testers target you know, a few, they're supposed to be the same, but they're not. So you need to get familiar if you're going to have multiple people going through this program, um, you know, make sure you're going to someone who is, who is credible and doesn't necessarily, we've had, know a lot of uh, people have had issues with some people who have their own, with some PPRs that have their own training, uh, trying to get you to use their training. So do your research on that. Um, we've had uh, great success with the with with the um, testers that we have used. So again, during the during the actual skill testing, they're going to do your pre-trip 
inspection first, uh, then moving along to your, your cab and air brake inspection. Again, that's, wh you, that's where uh, most failures occur. Uh, if they make it out of the range for range testing, uh, most almost always they will pass the road testing if they are a, a uh, courteous driver. So after they get their license, <laughs> then we go ahead and have them go ahead and actually or pass the test. We have them go ahead and get their license and then uh, start doing some training. Uh, I don't know about everyone else, but you know we like to start with uh, them shooting baskets and no, just kidding. This is uh, actually just a. Uh, oh a fun uh, slide from the uh, concrete rodeo, from the mixer driver rodeo. So I uh, wanted to keep it short and quick, see if we got any actual questions. Any questions for Marvin on uh, what consumers does for their driving or on the specifics of the FMCSA process and, and things like that? If you want to raise your hand, if you'd rather talk instead of typing it out, that's fine. But the Q&A window or the chat window if you need it. Marvin, I've got one. Do you, when you have drivers that choose to um, apply you know, for to consumers for a job that are already have mixer driver experience, already have their CDL, class A or class B or whatever with their brakes. Um, do you have them go through a similar training program or do you, if they're coming with experience driving a mixer driver truck, do you just put them to work? So we have three different levels of training. The one is for somebody who is, you know, green off the street, like just got their CDL. Um, and that's this full process. It's uh, it takes you know six weeks or so, depending on the person. You know, um, then we have this someone who has some some experience uh, in driving, but maybe not necessarily ready mix experience. Then there's a two to three week training program that they go through, and there's a daily checklist and then a sign off list of what they have. Uh, we developed that a, probably about four or five years back. That had, that actually helped us uh, quite a bit. We were I think we were turning people over a little too quick um, to be able to pour. And if it's somebody who actually has a decent amount of experience, then we'll just have uh, one of our trainers just trail them. And depending on how long, you know, it's normally two days, um, but it could be if someone's got a significant experience, it it could just be that you know we have to consumerize them or you know kind of put them to the way that we do things and because each of each producer may do some things a little differently. Gotcha. Um, do you guys have one of those mixer driver trucks that is a two seater in the cab, a training truck? No, we do not. Um, so uh, if we did, then we probably would be training the, the uh, new hires or the CDL training program in that truck. Um, but uh, they're they're a little difficult to actually train people with. You. They're they're that's real tight inside those. Um, so uh, the a rear discharge would also be pretty cool to train train somebody in. But no, we just use that tandem axle dump truck to get their to get their actual license. And during the training, they start off uh, following the mixer in a in a pickup truck. And so they follow them to job sites um, and then they start driving back empty and eventually work their way up to driving out to the job sites and, and doing everything on their own. Okay. Um, this is a significant amount of time and money invested in some of these new hires. Uh, is there any sort of agreement uh, that you make them um, stay for a minimum amount of time? prior to them, because you said your success rate in the most recent crop was 14 out of 17 that have stuck around. Yeah, um, it, yeah what is what is the agreement in place? That's, a, that? that's, a, that's a good question. We didn't originally, but now we do have a, a, a retention agreement for those who we help to get their CDL. So what we do, is we take, you know, basically kind of half the cost of a, of a CDL program and we hold them to that within, um, if they leave within two years, 
then we expect them to pay us that to pay us back. Um, very few times have we had to had to uh, uh, go after people in those, uh, but we do. Uh, we 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 do we do it very seriously, um, just because we don't want it to get out that we're we're helping people get their CDLs and 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 them just to move on to a different industry. Yeah. Yeah, or or to another company or something. Right, right. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be uh, a service you'd be providing for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but which, we, which is why I'm actually trying to get as many people as possible to you know if if they have the desire to do so to 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 train as well to help bring everybody up. You know that way there's a larger pool for us to 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 choose from. Yep. Yeah, especially over time. Like if, if they put their two years in and decide that they want to try somebody else out, but everybody else is doing a similar training program. It, uh, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any other questions or, or concerns from any of the attendees? I don't see anything popping up in the hands raised or the chat or the Q and a, this is your last chance to figure out why consumers does has a good successful program here. All good then. Okay. All right, everybody. This one is short and sweet. And uh, Marvin, we appreciate your time and effort. And uh, for those of you that are on the horn, if you want more information about this or to get um, Marvin's contact info, please feel free to reach out to us or to Marvin if you have his info. Uh, It sounds like he's more than happy to share some of the uh, things that they do at Consumers. Um, And We'll, uh, would love for others to, to to develop similar programs. So we would encourage those of you on the horn to, to do something similar or are, uh, you know, at your organization. Uh, but uh, yeah, feel free to, to reach out to Marvin if you have questions about this in the future. All right. See you, everybody. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Tuesday.